Hi everybody, this is Sharon. I'm coming here today with Roz again on my second time with you and we are going to go through some ideas of how we can empower ourselves to make changes with the self-awareness coach. So this is, um, so now I will go put that down and I will show Roz and I. How are you Roz? Welcome and thank you for joining me this afternoon. <laughs> Yeah, hi Sharon. It's yeah, it is Roz here. <laughs> <laughs> That's dumb. I do know who I am, and yes, it's a nice fine afternoon, getting a bit cooler as it's moving into autumn. Well, it has moved into autumn now, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought we would give it a go on how we can make um, ourselves empowered and to make some changes. And I would, I thought I should have done this beforehand, but of course I haven't. Um, can how we can empower ourselves. Um, and do you have any idea of what you think it might be, Roz? Well, for myself, in the way that I actually do that, it has taken a few years. Um, turning 60 this year, so I suppose probably there's been 60 years of doing that. Uh, look, it started probably around about the 2000s roughly as a mark that uh, awareness was starting to happen concerning needing to make changes for myself. And then the way that I do that more specifically now is having an awareness in my own body of where I suppose the old fashioned term is gut feeling. I do a lot through gut feeling, but intuition um, through my psychic senses, what spirit gods are telling me, even prayer. Uh, dreams there's so many ways of actually having that empowerment happen through the things that we receive as messages and stuff like that that's what I go with <laughs> yeah oh, that's good so we're not doing readings today so if anybody that has come through on my time tv who thinks that uh, we are doing psychic mediumship we're not doing psychic mediumship today. We are actually just talking about how we can empower yourself with some positive changes. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I've realised over the period of time that you feel often um, you don't have a good sense of self-powerment is when you don't have a clear goal. So often finding yourself, giving yourself some quiet time, that's one of the things that is a, a really good thing to do for yourself and just hear the inner your inner self you would that's what you're sort of saying with your trust your gut instincts basically is that correct Ros, from what i'm hearing from you well it is yeah yeah it is uh i mean the first wonderings were really i mean it, it does i suppose Kylie. come from a christian Christian upbringing and all of that I suppose that that is where any of what our life starts at and you start to question what's around you well I did and what the belief system was that I've inherited and been brought up with and wondering do I really believe in it do, and you know you do to a degree but it's the actual owning what part of it speaks to you yourself and that's what happened for me. It started being that I was getting things uh, as far as messages and that sort of thing directly to me that I knew was for, direct from spirit, guides, whatever way, you know, my discoveries were. And it is actually individual for every person. So it was that and following it, knowing what I was doing was the right pathway for me. Um, I mean, who, when they get married, really feels that they're going to end up being divorced 30 years later? Not, but that's what happened we try not in to my decision that on that. Way, yeah, that's right. But, I mean, that's part of what is empowering. I followed what my instincts, what my gut feeling, what my intuition and guidance was telling me. So, um, and that's where it comes in. You, you trust yourself. Um, and yes, I'm full of agreement with you, which is why part of the things that I wanted to work with people, with people, and particularly women, um, because we lose ourselves trying to be something special. Like 
we often grow up trying to we're, we're somebody's daughter we're somebody's sister we're somebody's girlfriend then we become somebody's wife and then if we have children we become somebody's uh, mother and then if we go to, to work we become something else that's there as well so we often don't actually understand what it is to be you and that's a really important question on what you can say to yourself is who are you and how can we make changes and how do we get you know just find that self again if you've lost it as you say after 30 years of marriage going through a divorce what is some of the things that we can do for ourselves and I've jotted down a couple of things that we I thought tonight that we might discuss, Roz. And the first one, of course, was trust your gut instincts, which is exactly right. Um, my myself, I had gone through a marriage that I I was really good at the start, listening to my gut instincts. But then, as the days went on, raising four children and then being self-employed. The similar story to you, which is probably why we're so, we are good friends, everybody out there, so Roz and I have, uh, are quite good friends together. But we have similar mm. stories in the fact that we were busy with our, helping our husbands build a business and also juggling the four children at home and then trying to do some of the stuff, getting called into work. For me, I wasn't intending to go to my ex-husband's work, but I ended up doing it anyway, which is, pretty well what you were doing, Ros. Hmm. So I Fuck found me. with with him, um, it would I I found that I found as busy as I got, I didn't listen to my gut instincts. So um, you know, the gut instincts I was thinking with myself, I kept thinking, oh how can I be wrong when he was telling me what I should be feeling and how I was feeling wasn't the way I was really feeling. So I really believe that I would say now to a young woman or any woman that's coming out and about and learning to be empowered is just to listen to yourself. Take some quiet time with you and listen to your gut because that sense of self, that sense of oneness will actually never really lead you astray. You know, you can ask from so many people around, you know, what do you think of this and what do you think of that? But that doesn't necessarily mean that you're listening to an answer and sometimes just taking that quiet time to meditate and to listen to yourself. And for me, meditation was sometimes when I was walking the dog, I'd walk every day for an hour and just walking along with the dog, it just put me into a sort of meditative state where I could hear my, myself and you know often the answers I was told that were deep inside of me and I just had to take the time to listen so I found that um, asking myself while I was walking what should I do next and it and then the the voice came so clearly to me to tell me and I of course I argued with it <laughs> it's just it's just what you do because, you know, you go, no, no, that's not yeah. the answer. But it came back again and, yes, and that's what I'm doing at the moment. It told me to open up my business and, and to do massage and that was about 16 years ago, 17 years ago, and now I'm branching out and doing this because it's led me in this direction. So it's not kept me there but it was what I needed at that particular time to start my business and I listened. And is that something similar to you, Ros? Did you hear that yourself? Uh, look, I suppose because I was already directly working within our own business, like I'd helped build it up from uh, from the ground up, basically. Well, actually, it was from the shit up, but, you know, because that's what it was. We were working in manures. Um, it was, I suppose it was at a point where, I, you know, you felt you weren't listened to. I felt I wasn't listened to because the way that we were working together was just so automatic. I was doing the office and he was out and out and about away on jobs. And it's it's just, it gets to the point, well, you've got to trust your own decisions in what you're doing with managing a business. And uh, it got to the point I was able to trust myself and the, and the, what I was getting 
in the end um, so that uh, you know even though I would ask opinion of some that were around me at the time I was doing that exploration and self-development you know getting to find the self-love again because it had been devoted to family and business and that side of life for well it was 30 years and then realizing no look it's got to be something that i follow my path at this point because you know there was um opportunity to continue on with the marriage but it just wasn't working out you know we tried what we could so you, you take steps and that's what i've done i've taken steps to actually fully trust myself and what decisions i was making some of them since have been you know a bit so so but that's part of school of exploration and and finding what works to to be the tools that i'm using now um of continuing onward with just doing even more discovery because you're never quite finished because that's not part of it yeah and, and i agree um i find that sometimes we can just be so busy during our everyday sort of life that we don't stop to ask yourself what is it that i truly want and how can i go about it because you know like you hear it and people throw it off oh your answers are within yourself and unless you actually practice that habit it you don't actually realize that the answers are inside yourself so one of the things to help you just feel stronger and have that inner sense of empowerment and strength for yourself is to develop a new habit now you know and put your habits into play so some of the habits that you've started just recently Roz um, is over this last year is that you're having a weekly talk show every week mm. and that's a habit that you're doing and that is something that I'm about to be doing as well so this is my second one this week so I'm I'm quite excited with myself and <laughs> <laughs> that's all right we've got animals <laughs> I think another dog's walking past in her territory that's all <laughs> yes I've got mine in here snoring and I'm thinking how long before she starts to everyone hears her snore mm. but yeah so one of the things that I've found that um starting a habit is is a really good thing so you know habit first thing in the morning like as you do is opening up your cards and doing a reading in the cards every morning and another person's habit is you know listening to a meditation first thing in the morning and we've got some lovely ladies here on this channel that are doing daily um and meditations or they're doing weekly meditations with with that they're following so that's mm. what some of the things that we're getting into a habit for and as you continually do these these different things and they become a habit you get stronger with it and that's part of the thing that we learned when we both did hypnosis is that mm. we don't realize that when you first for example when you first start learning how to drive a car the first things you hop in there is that you're thinking okay i have to change the gears is my seat in the right place have i can i see the mirror can i do this and you know turn the key and doing all of those kinds of things but then the more you drive the car nowadays you know like 40 years later you hop in the car and you don't consciously think of any of those things you just Hopefully you remember to put the roller door up, but that's about you know because <laughs> the older that you get, the roller door. Door. <laughs> uh, my dad did that. I haven't yeah, yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, like getting into a habit to do some of the things is is something that you do, and like I know from mm. myself, just a little tiny thing was like always. Um, I'm getting absolutely sick and tired of sitting on my sunglasses. So I got into the habit of putting my sunglasses in its case and putting it in the handbag. And then one day when I conscious, consciously decided to think, where is my sunglasses? Mm -hmm. well, they were put away because I, I wasn't even thinking about it. It becomes such a habit forming thing that you don't even consciously think about it. So those things give you a strong sense of power within yourself once you've built up those those habits what are some of the habits that you would suggest that to our viewers that they should be looking at uh, 
I think the first really is uh, when you're waking up just to be thankful for the day ahead is one of the, <laughs> I don't do it all the time, but it is something that's consciously there uh, as a, oh, thank you, whatever you want to label your God, thank you for that I'm awake even. It's it's just that acknowledgement that, that, that we're a presence, that we are uh, a being in the universe. Mm. And I think really, I mean, I know for myself what my actual habits are, you know, the, the usual things I'm waking are, you know, you go to the bathroom, you go to the kettle, or look, do the coffee, or for some it's do a juice. I mean, I've gotten into the habit now of actually doing a citrus juice. Whether it's lime or lemon, it doesn't matter. It's the juice of one of them, top it with water, chug it down, because I like the flavour of it and it gets the body active, the, the gut active. Um, Look, I think it's more just becoming present, have that thought for what even am I going to do next? Um, I like doing the flutes, but I don't, you know, my intention was to do that and play that every day first thing in the morning. Well, that hasn't happened. But the more times that I actually think of it as being an intention, then it does become the habit. It may or may not yet, I don't know, but it's, it's still the process. Um, having, like you said, right at the start, having a goal. Well, that's what the intention is. It's, it's setting some form of a goal. Just a slightly different name, slightly different perspective. Yeah, um, yeah. What others would I suit, uh, sort? Um, source. I don't know, words are tangling in my mouth at the moment and I don't know why. It's probably the salt I ate with the chips. <laughs> <laughs> Dried it out. <laughs> Another thing that I've got that written down, I've, I jotted a few things down for our listeners so that we could have some sort of remnants of control when we chat because we often like to just chat about all different sorts of things and get sidetracked on different things. But oh, one of the fun, things right? that I that doesn't sound well, yeah, um, no. is, is actually, well, one, being prepared. Hi, good little brownie, you know, like so. I am... <laughs> I did concentrate on being prepared. <laughs> so I, as I said, I jotted down. So some of the things that to help people feel not so anxious, not so overwhelmed with their day is to be be, be prepared. And one of the things that a lot of the, um, if you're looking it up or checking it out, a lot of people will say write lists. That is wonderful if you're a list person. I tend to write the list and then completely forget to mark them off, but there's a lot of people that really love to mark them off. So you have to sort of learn what is your style, your own personal style to get ahead. So the list building is really good if you're a list builder person. And I, for myself, I love diaries. I absolutely love them. And I buy them all the time. And then I never write in them. And so... <laughs> <laughs> so oh, I, think, oh, I do know that as a fact. Yes, you do. What sort of person you are? But mm. even though I actually love writing my diary, I find that looking on my phone, I'll often put my things into my phone now, and my list is in the phone, so I can actually have myself with some sort of remnants of organisation on my phone. So you know, have a list, but the list doesn't have to be in your diary. That looks really amazing but never gets filled out or only half gets mm. filled out or you write a list and go to the shop and forget it That's somebody that would do it. oh <laughs> but these are, do that yeah. yeah and so it is learning to know how you tick as a person and what will work for you and get yourself feeling a lot stronger and also learning how to forgive yourself if things don't go quite the way you want to go. Nothing worse than having a whole list of plans and then you it, it for whatever reason, flies out the window and you don't be able to, to achieve the stuff that you thought you were going to achieve and then you berate yourself afterwards. It is so... We are not our own best friends most times. Most times as women, in particular, I can talk for myself, and I, a lot of people that I have been dealing with, they do the same thing. They pick on themselves a lot harder than they pick on 
anybody else. And as I have often been said to say to people, treat yourself like you're your own best friend. Now, would you tell your best friend how stupid they were for forgetting the list when they went shopping? Would you tell <laughs> you? <laughs> would you? I don't. No, Ros, I don't do that. <laughs> you don't do that to me, but I'd tell you if I knew it. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't. <laughs> but what I'm saying is treat yourself like you would treat your own best friend. You wouldn't um, berate your own best friend. You would give them a little bit of leeway and, and, and with a bit of tender loving care you would say, oh, gosh, fancy forgetting the list. You wouldn't say something nasty. And that's what we, our inner critic, will often tell ourselves something really quite nasty. So what I'm saying is just don't listen to that inner cr critic that it's inside your voice, in your head. Listen to and treat yourself like you would treat your best friend. So if your friend was um, Jenny down the street and you, you wouldn't talk to Jenny the way you would talk in your innermost voice, so you have to look after her yourself so that's one of the things um you got any feedback on that Ros? uh well um Ms. most Buda. of my, my yeah well exactly and most of the people that know me or even my family who've been around sometimes when i've forgotten that they're around i talk to myself all the time it's not even just on the inner level <laughs> so it's uh sometimes no nah, look it's not really nasty it's just you know you, you sort of jokingly will tell yourself off sometimes if you do something stupid um but it is it's the self-talk that we give ourselves really that does matter and yeah uh it's part of the learning process as well to um be gentle on self stop criticizing but it's like anything. I mean, it's all a process and it's a step at a time with how we move, change our perspective, have a different look at things. Um, not overdoing it, though, I think, because then you'd be so much introspective that you wouldn't get anything done out where we're supposed to be living in this world as well. Because that's, that's all, you know, it's got to find the balance. Yeah, well, that's that's right. And I just think that... Often, we, well, I was a firstborn child and a firstborn child is often told that they need to look after everybody else and they need to check it all out and, and you, know, you know better, you should try a little bit harder and all of those sort of messages were are given out without even thinking, well, back in, you know, I'm getting old as well, I'm nearly 60 myself, so a year younger than you, Ros, but... Um, yeah. But, you know, like we're getting there. So what I'm saying is that, you know, those, I think the parents are a lot more enlightened today that they don't say some of those things to their children as much as what was said to us when we were younger. Mm. And, you know, like I found that I was always worried about being wrong. And so that's what I like to try and encourage my people that I am dealing with not to be, not to worry so much about whether you're perfect you don't have to be perfect at it all you can be a little bit more prepared you mm. can have some stumbling blocks but the stumbling blocks don't need to hold you back and if you take some time with your sense of with yourself and listen to your gut feelings you really don't go too far wrong from all of those kind of things um mm. and you know i just think that it's it's something that we can really learn as women and as people and sisters and friends just to stop a little bit and take some quiet time and listen to that gut feeling. Hmm. And um, learning to say no. Sometimes you just have to say no to people too. If they're pushing you into a situation that you don't like, you just say, no, I don't want to do that. And how good are you? How good were you when you were younger, Ros, at saying no? <laughs> now that's an interesting question <laughs> because it comes back to well the different context context of where that's in as well. Uh, I'd have to say I said no a lot as a rebellious um, middle child or bully 
or whichever label I would have put on it at what situation, um, whether it was for my benefit or not. I mean, that's it can be whether it was because of being a stubborn so-and-so because I wanted my own way or whether it was just because I was just not wanting to do as I was told, which is still pretty much some of the gist that I say no for because I just don't want to do as I'm told because I feel, you know, in... You know, your question as far as how can we empower ourselves, what actually is empowerment? Is it just being stubborn and have, wanting your own way or is it because it's actually standing your ground and you are being empowered by it? What's the definition of empowerment? Um, yeah, I probably went off track there, didn't I? Or did I? <laughs> did I answer your question? Well, you could have saying no, Rose. No, I'll get you back on the track. <laughs> <laughs> you know me in the rabbit holes. <laughs> Look, I'm just going to have to. I've got to get this because she's staring at me and I have to get her out. Is she going to sit on my arm? No, she's not. She sits up there on my I told you there was on a my little desk. Up the, up the top. And she was a distraction. So I'm pretty sure that in some way she was actually chatting to me, saying, this is what you're supposed to say. This is what you're supposed to say. No, 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 you know, little things like that. She's just my little desk witch. Not um, supposed to say anything, Rose. You can say it or not, don't say it. She's not meant to. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, saying no. I can say no these days, yes. So no, even I can say no. Most of the time. <laughs> Um, what I'm saying is I'm about 30-something. Were you good at saying no then? Uh, gee, it takes a bit to go back that far. <laughs> it's half a lifetime ago, literally. <laughs> yeah. Look, at that point in time, focus was so much to do with business and family. You just did things. And I don't think there was any thought, should I be empowered about anything? Should I actually say no? We've just got to get this done and this is what needs to be done. Yeah, so I probably wasn't saying no much at all. Mm. I found the same thing. Um, one of the things when you are busy looking and raising your family, if somebody else throws something else at you, you just try and juggle all these balls and you just find, and, and that's what I'm trying to say, how to empower yourself, is that when you're holding too many balls in the air, you just, there's no time for you because you're too busy mm -hmm. trying not to drop all the balls. So yep. and that's, as you were saying, what is empowerment? Well, basically knowing what you want without you being lost in the, the busyness of the every day. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you, it's a wrong thing to be selfish. And that's something that, you know, like people would say, oh, but you're being incredibly selfish and you're so full of yourself. How can you be full of anybody else? You can't be. I can't be full of you and you can't be full of me. So it has to be full of ourselves as long as we can hear ourselves because if we're full of contradictions, we're not going to get anything. Even for ourselves, we don't know where we're going. So it's all of that kind of um, suggestions to me. You know, like I, well, it used to be such thrown out as a mean word, you know, you're being selfish. But now you can just say thank you. I think uh, as well, too, in the era that we were raised, it was probably one of those things that was pushed a lot of, uh, like, that selfish word being there was a lot of involvement that my parents had in community. Uh, and it's something, too, that I took on in those early years, being involved in parish council and being involved as a lay preacher and being involved in school committees as well as running a business, as well as looking after kids. You didn't really have much time, like you said, you just didn't really have much time for yourself. But it was also something that was expected that you didn't focus on yourself, that you did put yourself, especially in small towns, small country communities, because there was no one else to do it. So you had to put in to have a community. So mm. I think that's too where that 
blew it out. And it's not seen as much now because the volunteer involvement's dropped a lot because there's the need, I suppose, there is the need for two members of a family, like as in the two couple, two partners in a couple family, you know, whatever, um, to work because things have gotten to that point where the need is for more dollars to do the survival. I don't know the answer to that one, but it does, we do need to focus on putting that input to ourselves to get that healthy balance that is a lifestyle around what's important to us. What is important to us first is our own body, mind, spirit, health. Yep, mm. yep. So I'm not sure how getting off track here with this sense of empowerment. I'm just talking about now being in a bee life, how long we have been on. I didn't take much notice and I'm looking at where it would be for how long we have been chatting. I think in the back end of what is <laughs> the back end of the system somewhere, you probably have it on yours because you're the host. Yeah, uh, on I your can't. screen. It I didn't take any notice. No. I didn't say. All I've got on the Facebook page, it was 11 seconds ago because I haven't refreshed that one because I don't want to lose the chat stream. So, yeah. yeah. And that's one of the things with the Be Live. Oh, well, you know, doing live stuff. It, it's one of those little tick box. Take note of when you start. Yeah. When it should be. I didn't see that. Mm. Yeah. I can see some of the ladies have said it about 17 minutes ago, but, yeah, like it's or 17 well, it seconds. Be, that, I'm not really oh, sure whether that was that. So, well, one of the luxuries, well, I, I think, of being unscheduled is that you can take as long as you like up to four hours if you want to <laughs> for Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> I don't oh, want to talk feel, No, look, I mean, that's where if you feel that the subject's finished for what you wanted to cover for now, um, that's fine too. Um, you can move on to well, something I, else that tricks your mind or you can finish. Yeah. Mm. Well, I'm sort of thinking that some of the things that for the meaning for self-empowerment is taking control of your own life. We've had a bit of a chat about our lives. Uh, goal setting is a great one and making positive choices. So basically learning to take some time to yourself, trust your gut, develop your habits, mm. focus on what you can control, be a little bit more prepared in whatever you're about to tackle so that you don't feel overwhelmed and anxious about that situation. Gaining your knowledge to move forward. We didn't talk about that, but gaining knowledge to move forward is a good one as well, but that sort of goes hand in hand with being prepared and learning to say no so hopefully people yes hmm? gaining knowledge to move forward i just want to make a point on that um every step that we take whether it feels like it's moving forwards or backwards it's change so yes. we're still progressing in some form so is there really a need to actually label it as that we are moving forward we are changing each and every second of the day. So, I mean, it's, I just wanted to point that out, that, you know, there, some people at times will give themselves a guilt trip because they don't feel like they're moving forward. They are changing. But moving forward too, Ros, I'd like to, um, uh, you know, defin define that a little bit more, is that if you're sitting still and not actually doing anything, then you can't change direction. So you you need to be moving just a little bit to be able to swivel around some mm. of those things that you, that we were learning from. I mean, how long have you been talking to me about getting on this platform and talking to you? So I've done a few practices with you that aren't on screen, mm. but now we're out there chatting to other women. Mm. Um, but basically, yes, those are the things that we need to be doing. So here I am. Here you are. Thank you very much for joining me today. And thank you to all of the lovely ladies that did join us as well. Um, and thank you for the two people that yeah. are still watching. I'm not sure whether that's you, one of them is you or not. but One, one of them anyway, probably is me. <laughs> thank you to the other person that is watching. Thank you. Um, so I'm yeah. going to um, say goodbye yeah. and... 
Um, I think and then just, yeah, Sin's yeah. still watching. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. All right. So I'm going to put it on solo now and say goodbye. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Ros, for joining us.